All right, welcome to the chapter six practice test review. So if you are in my class and you are watching this, um, really it only works if you have the practice test with you and in front of you. If this is being used in my class, please make sure that all the practice tests are out and on student desks prior to continuing the video. Go ahead and pause. I'll be here when all the tests are out. Okay, so hopefully all the tests are out. Uh, and remember, this only works if you have the practice test in front of you. All right. So number one talks about point G. And point G is in the graph at the top of the practice test. And that coordinate point is 0, 3. And really, all that one asks you to do is to translate that 3 left and 4 down. If I go 3 left and 4 down, I, I make that into a vector, negative 3, because it's going left and negative 4 because it's going down. I apply that to my original point, and I have 0 minus 3 and 3 minus negative 4. Cool. Does anyone know the answer? Mm. If there's a hand up, it should be called on. And if that hand said that g prime was negative 3 comma negative 1, then you're right. Go ahead and pause the video here. Make sure the video is paused and ensure that all the students have written this down um, next to their question. Because you can use this on the test. If you've unpaused the video, then that means that everyone has written down the notes for number one. Cool. So let's go on to number two. So number two asks us about uh, H prime, which of course is H in the original graph at the top of the page. So the original uh, point h is positive 2 comma positive 3. And the question asks us to rotate it 90 degrees clockwise. So to do that, I change the sign of x from positive to negative, and then I switch the places of x and y. So if someone has their hand raised, go ahead and call on them if they know h prime. Step by step, if they have um, 3 comma negative 2, they are correct. Um, go ahead and pause the video here and make sure everyone has all of this written down. Cool. All right, now that everyone has number two written down, let's move on to number three. All right, number three asks about point I. And point I is, in, uh, is on the graph at the top of the page. Now, point I is specifically 3, 1. And the test asks us, to reflect y, uh, reflect it over the y-axis. So to do that, I have to change the sign of x. Now there should be a hand in the air. Does someone know how to reflect point i over the y-axis? And if that person has said i prime is negative 3 comma 1, they are correct. Now I'm going to say this after every question. Pause the video. Look at your partner next to you. Make sure the teacher is seen that you have written down all of the notes for number three next to your question. Now that everyone has number three written down, let's take a look at number four. Number four asks us about point J, and it gives us a lot of different uh, ways that we could transform J as the answer choices. And it gives us J prime, and it says J prime is zero comma negative one. Now, if this was a rotation around the origin, I know it cannot give us j prime because the numbers are not 1 and 1 over here somewhere with different signs. In fact, if I look at the x, I see that I've added 1. And if I look at the y, I see that I've subtracted 2. That leads me to understand it's only one transformation that we explored that could give us that j prime. And that is a translation of 1 right and 2 down. And that's the vector. Again, go ahead and pause the video. Make sure that your partner neighbor next to you, across from you, um, has written this down on their paper. As the teacher, you should walk around and make sure that everyone wrote this on their paper as well. Don't worry. Pause the video. I'll be here when you get back. And we're back. Now that everyone has number four written on their paper, we're going to take a look at number five. Now, number five talks about point R. And point R is going to be translated 5 right and 2 down. Now, in order to translate r, I need to take this description and turn it into a vector. If I go right, I'm adding, and if I go down, I'm subtracting. So go ahead and apply that vector 
And when we do, um, I'm really just adding 5 to x and subtracting 2 from y. So negative 2 could be x and 7 could be y. Awesome. I'm going to wait for the plane to fly by, and as I do in the background, go ahead and pause the video. Make sure that your partner next to you and to the left and right of you and in front of you has written this down on their paper. And as a teacher, you should walk around and make sure, as the video is paused, that everyone has this written on their paper. Excellent. Now that everyone has number five written down, let's take a look at number six. Which transformation makes things bigger and smaller? There should be a hand up. Did that person say dilation? Because that's the only thing that makes sense. Dilation is the only thing that makes something larger or smaller. Do you have this written down? Pause the video. Check the people around you. And we're back. Let's flip over that page and take a look at number seven. All right, so number seven is real interesting. And it asks us to talk about the scale factor of dilation. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the original line, which is the larger line. And I know it's that because it does not have the prime, which is a little tick mark after the letters. Now, if I measure the height of that line, it is 4. Go ahead and draw and count the number of boxes from the origin to the top of that line, the beginning, and you'll see that that is actually just 4 boxes. That's 4 up. And if we look at B prime, I'm going to count from the origin to that same B, B prime, and you'll see that it is only 2 boxes, 2 units up. So from B to B prime, it got smaller. So it's a fraction, 2 over 4. I can reduce that fraction, and my scale factor is 1 half. Now this is a big and a lot of information, big question. Go ahead and pause the video. Make sure that your neighbor in front of and neck left and right of you have put this on their paper correctly. They have the 4, they have the 2, they have how to find the scale factor. As the teacher, you should walk around. Don't unpause the video until everyone has this on their paper. And we're back. So now that everyone has number 7 written on their paper, let's take a look at number 8. Now, really it's asking what type of dilation you've seen. Now, B prime, A prime is definitely smaller than B A. So there should be a hand up to tell you what kind of dilation that is. Go ahead and call on that hand. Did that person say reduction? Because they're right. It is a reduction. Make sure you have this written on your paper. Check your, your, your neighbor left and right in front of you. Have the teacher walk around. Go ahead and pause the video. We'll be back when everyone has this written down. All right, let's take a look at number 9. Number 9 gives us point H, which is 5, 2. Now, I don't care about the other numbers or the other points. I'm going to cross them out on my paper. I'm looking only at point H. And it asks us to translate that point 1 right and 3 down. I'm going to make that into a vector. Does someone know the vector? There should be a hand up. Call on that hand. Did someone say plus 1 minus 3? They're correct. And of course, apply that vector. Different person, different hand. Who's got it? There should be a hand up. Wait for it. Call on that hand. Did that person say that the answer was 6, comma, negative 1? Because it is. Now make sure all of this is written on your paper. This is extremely important. Make sure that you're only, uh, you only care about H, so make sure that you've only shown the work for H. Have your partners done it? Has the teachers checked you? Go ahead and pause the video until everyone is checked and everyone has this. Beautiful. Let's move on to number 10. So number 10 talks about point K. I don't care about the other points that they give me, so I'm going to cross those points out. It asks us to do something really specific for K. It says reflect over X. So i got to change the sign of y. So if I reflect over the x-axis, I change the sign of y. There should be a hand up telling you what, that they know. Call on that hand. Did that person say negative 4, negative 1 as k prime? They are correct. Go ahead and write this down on your paper. Check your partner's left and right of you and in front of you. Make sure the teacher has seen that you have all written this down on your paper. I'll pause. Go ahead and pause the video. When everyone's ready, unpause and I'll, be still, I'll still be here. That sound you hear is me drinking coffee. All right, number 11. So number 11, I'm rotating uh, 
QP, I'm rotating the whole shape around point Q, and I'm going 90 degrees counterclockwise, so I'm going against the clock as you see my arrow moving on the screen. Now, this line is going straight out to the right, which means that if it's rotated 90 degrees, this P is going to be rotated this way, so it's now pointing up. This line is three boxes long, so I draw a line three, oop, let's go back, three boxes long directly up. That gives me this, this point right here, which is 1, comma, positive 5. Sweet. 1, 5 is the coordinates of P prime. Excellent. Make sure this is on your paper. Make sure this is drawn on your graph. Make sure you understand. Check the partners next to you. Check the person in front of you. Make sure the teacher is seen. Rotate around the classroom. Pause the video. I'll be here when you get back. I'm going to drink some coffee. And we're back with the last question from the practice test. All right, now it talks about point A, and it wants us to dilate it by a scale factor of 2. I don't care about the other points, so I'm going to cross those points out. Now that I'm only looking at A, if the scale factor is a number, not a fraction, I am going to multiply. So 0 times 2, it's 0. And 4 times 2, there should be a hand in the air telling you what this is. You should kind of know what it is. There should be someone you should call on that person. Did that person say that you multiply both of them and that it's a prime is 0, 0,8? Because if they did, they're right. Make sure this is on your paper. Make sure the people left and right of you have it. Make sure the person in front of you has it and have the teacher see it. Pause the video. I'll be back when you're done. My coffee was delicious. All right. There's going to be a practice test that's going to be passed out to you if you're in my class and you're uh, and you're working working and watching on this. For those watching on YouTube, sorry, this video only works if you've got the practice test in front of you. And it was originally created for people who were um, there in the class with a substitute. So if it's confusing and I'm drinking coffee and I'm not my usual self, that's why. All right, now that we have all of these done, we have reached the end of our review. Make sure that you practice. Um, all, the new practice test uh, and put them both together. Both of them will be the only things on your desk allowed there when you take the actual chapter six test. Till then, ladies and gentlemen, keep doing the math.